I got this in the mail this morning. Well? Well, I can tell you free for nothing where this came from. You mean who sent it? No, I, I'd have to charge you for that. No, uh, this came from an ad for a movie called Meeting at Dawn, and the ad is in all the magazines. Well, sir? What am I going to do? I'm sure I don't know. But this is not just the usual junk from an anonymous crate. Well, someone is going to try to kill me. I don't know who, why, when, or how, but I want some protection. And, and, and I want to buy it from you. I could feel a yawn coming on. I'd heard Wolf tell at least 50 scared people of all ages and conditions. If someone is determined to kill you, the fact is that they will succeed. We knew Ben Jensen from the Peter Root case. I'd always thought Jensen would have bought the military secrets Captain Root had tried to sell him if he'd been able to figure out how to use them. He was a publisher, a politician, and in my opinion, a poop. That's why I want to hire your brains. You might be able to interest the police, and if not, uh, we can provide a list of reliable detective agencies who can provide bodyguards. What about him? Uh, Major Goodwin is unavailable. He's an officer of the United States Army. He's not in uniform. Officers in military intelligence on special assignment have freedoms. Special assignment? Yes, he assists me in various projects entrusted to me by the Army, such as the affair with Peter Root, which resulted in his court-martial and conviction. It leaves me little time for my private business. What am I going to do? I suggest you use your own brains and give up the idea of renting mine. Go about your business, but with reasonable vigilance. When licking envelopes, for instance, examine the mucilage uh, before, for signs of tampering. When opening a door, stand to one side and fling it wide before crossing the sill. Bear in mind your correspondent is severely restricted by saying, I will watch you die. This person has to be there when it happens. Good God. There's no panic is called for, sir. Uh, how many people, Archie, have threatened my life in the past ten years? Uh, about twenty-two. Fully, at least a hundred. And I'm not dead yet, Mr. Jensen, I'm not dead yet. Jensen pocketed the clipping and left. No better off than when he came, except for the valuable tips about licking envelopes. Cornwall and Mayor, if you decide to hire a bodyguard, have the best man. There you are. All right, Terry, come on. What, what the devil are you doing? I am trying to look as much like an officer as possible, sir. Hmm. Yes, I have an appointment in Washington day after tomorrow with General Carpenter. Oh, indeed. Yes, I, I want to take an ocean voyage. I have thought of a crushing remark to make to a German, and I'd like to use it. That's nonsense. I, I, every attempt you've made to go overseas has been denied. Yes, I think Carpenter will see my point. Look, I admit that you are a great detective, a champion beer drinker, and a genius. But this is a hell of a way to spend a war. And if Carpenter calls and you tell him that you can't do without me, well, then I am going to put gristle in your crab meat and sugar in your beer. Morning, Fritz. Hello. Oh, I've got it. Archie. The next morning, I decided to join my employer for breakfast. Where's Fritz? Archie, why are you serving me my breakfast? I knew he couldn't miss the banner headline about last night's murder of a certain familiar publisher. It turns out Ben Jensen paid us a visit the same day he <clears throat> stopped a bullet. yesterday, what? 12 hours before he was murdered. Not interested, not involved, not curious. Why? Why did you decline to work for him? What did he ever do to you? Nothing. I don't do that kind of work. You know that. Besides, he said he had no idea who intended to kill him. And a man who receives an anonymous threat is either in no danger or his danger is so acute that his position is hopeless. Yeah, that's what he told Cornwall, you said. And he now thinks you passed because you knew it was too hot to handle. Naturally, Cornwall's bitter. He just lost his best man in Doyle. 20 years in the game. Okay. He and Jensen spent the day together. 
After dinner, they went to a meeting. At 11.20, they arrived at Jensen's apartment building. Two men dead, and you gotta get upstairs to your damn horticulture. What about witnesses? Stebbins said there were none. The two 7th Avenue models who found the bodies never heard of Jensen. The doorman was in the basement stoking I'm the father. water heater. The elevator man was taking a tenant to the fourth floor. And beyond that, all we got is the population of New York City. Hey, and that's why I came to see you. For God's sakes, give me what you got. You can see I need it. I repeat, sir, I am not interested, not involved, and not curious. Now, I would appreciate if you would leave my bedroom. With pleasure. Here, here's an extra funny paper. And don't throw that paper ever! That black silk bed cover is to be used for a shroud when the time comes. Let me know. I'll come over and help you sew it up. This is a violation of our agreement, Tashi. I suppose so, but I ran across something in the mail I thought you'd find uh, amusing. Sure is a coincidence, huh? The edges are clipped closer to the words on this one. Yes, I, I will deal with the mail at 11 o'clock as usual. postpone your trip to Washington. Why? Because of that tomfoolery. No panic is needed. You intend to go? Yeah, just don't look any envelopes. And uh, bear in mind, your correspondent is severely restricted as... When do you leave? I'm booked on the 6 o'clock train. Oh, good. Then we'll have the day then. Your notebook. But first, a, a comment on your jocosity. <sighs> when Mr. Jensen showed us that thing, we had no inkling of the character of the person who sent it. We no longer enjoy that ignorance. I agree. And if you decide to stay in bed until I return from Washington, I won't tell anyone. Well, that thing was not sent to you. True. Learn the whereabouts of Captain Root. Locate Mr. Root. Well, that's easy. He was uh, put away for three years in the cooler. Well, then call General Carpenter and arrange for him to be brought here, as well as any records of Root. Inform Mr. Kramer of these developments and find that uh, fiancé of his. Ah, Jane Gear. Yes, yeah, she raised quite a ruction about Root. She called me a, a mongrel bloodhound. Not a good epithet. Contradiction in terms. Yeah. I, I've uh, sort of struck up a kind of acquaintance with her. Uh, yes, excuse I, me um, for interrupting, but you have a train to catch, don't you? Uh, would you like to see her before I leave? Well, you have a habit of knowing how to locate personable young women without delay. I called Kramer, General Carpenter, and then went in search of the elusive Miss Gear. It took most of the afternoon. It was not my opinion that this special item of God's second bounty for man was guilty of premeditated and cold-blooded murder. She claimed she was being framed, but she had a different slant on the Peter Root case. And after Wolf is finished, do you take me down to the station? Now listen, Tiger Eyes, do you see me sneaking up behind you? I should have known. You with so many women, you have to issue ration coupons, and yet you find so much time for me. Well, you know why. Do I? You've got a mirror. Hmm. Now, uh, I understand that you have acquired a slightly different slant on Captain Root since you called Mr. Wolf a mongrel bloodhound. I was taken in. I thought Peter was innocent in being made the goat. Ah. But I'm over that, as you should know. Unless you're a two-faced, subhuman pithecanthropus. Am I? After my experience with the charming, irresistible Mr. Root, I wouldn't marry a combination of Winston Churchill and Victor Mature. Ah. I wouldn't even marry you. <clears throat> oh, I know you're disappointed. 
But I'm going to become the first female vice president of the biggest advertising agency in the country, and I never will if my name is made public as a murder suspect. I see. Well, I'll tell you what, you shouldn't use that line of Mr. Wolf. See, he has a peculiar attitude toward uh, women in business. I'll handle Nero Wolf. Oh, you will, huh? Mm. You'll handle Nero Wolf. Well, hooray for you. No one else has. Mm. Now, come on. I can't miss all my trains. Let's go. Drink up. Mr. Brenner, is he in his office? No, he is in his room. Excuse me. I beg your pardon. I need to see Mr. Wolf. Ah, uh, well, I'm sorry. He has an appointment. I'm Emil Jensen, the son of Ben Jensen, who was killed last night. Ah, well, that's different. There wasn't much of a father-son resemblance, but that's oh. nature's lookout. I'm busy enough as it is. When I heard about my father, I got leave. I'm still rather uh, disconcerted. Oh. Oh, oh. here, let me. Uh, sir, yeah, I have, uh, Miss Gear here. Also, Emil Jensen just arrived, son of Ben Jensen. I am engaged and can see no one. Yeah, for how long? I am making no appointments this week, Archie. I see, but you said that Archie. you... Tell them that, please. Uh, Mr. Wolf uh, sends his regrets, but he will be unable to see you this evening. After dragging me up here? Sir, with all due respect, my father had a conversation with Mr. Wolf that I would like to know about. The, uh, that's just the way it goes. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Not to mention the fact that I had a whole evening planned for myself, and it all changed for me to be here, and now look what happens. Yes, I can see your point very much so, but, uh, you know, all parties have to agree upon a meeting. Two out of three doesn't cut it. Miss Gear. Yes. I'm sorry about your troubles, but it seems hopeless, at least for this evening here. The three of us had an extended conversation that got nowhere, other than to increase Major Jensen and Jane's inclination to cast sympathetic glances at each other. Perhaps you and I could join forces on a taxi. Going down the stoop, I noticed she steadied herself on his unobtrusive arm. That showed astonishing progress, as she was by no means a born clinger. This is what you were engaged in? Mm hmm When's the next train? Seven. Well, what the hell? I can put it off a week. No, I know what's on your mind. Uh, my motive is uh, selfish. If I'm with Carpenter, when the word comes that you've been killed, I'll never get my transfer. Confounded, I have no intention of being killed. Get out of here. Your role as Mr. Wolf's assistant is absolutely vital. At the Pentagon, General Carpenter and I had a frank discussion regarding my role in the war effort. He saw no reason to change it. Play ball, son. Horse and cur. That's rather a nice little epithet, isn't it? Horse and cur. A bit medieval, I must admit. Why did you not listen to Mr. Churchill? Uh, did he tell me something? He was warning us that the Germans were rebuilding. Violating Versailles. Ah, oh, well, yeah, Versailles, yes. Well, I've actually heard that it's a very nice place to live, and probably the reason the French had that revolution. Exactly. Allons enfants de la patrie, hein? Reason was the goddess then. And then came Klaus Witz. And he rules us all. Hmm? Yes, sir. Well, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Well, now that you're here, why not stay around a few days? We'll get... Uh... Colonel Ricky, to see if there are any questions about uh, Mr. Wolf's current cases. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Colonel Ricky. Dicky, sir. What's that? Dicky. My name's not Dicky. I'm General Carpenter. I'm Dicky, sir. Well, of course you are. Proceed. Questions. Yes. You wanted to know if we had any questions about the cases Mr. Wolf is working on. Yes, yes. Uh, if I may, sir, uh, we were talking about why it is we didn't listen to Churchill. Yes, on the Treaty of Versailles, indeed, indeed. As Flavius Vegetius Renatus once remarked, those who prepare eagerly during peace mount without delay during the confusion of battle. No one listened. No one. And then they came across the fields of Europe and took France. Just like they did during the Great War. 
Mm. Just like the Goths did during the sacking of Rome. And what the Dodgers tend to do to Cleveland. <laughs> uh, play ball. Dickie, there's a hard G in that Latin name, you know. It's Virginius. I stand corrected, sir. Absolutely. I should think so. Allow me to invite in the staff. Good. Proceed. Thank you, sir. Questions, gentlemen. I spent the next two days in a room full of colonels, putting our heads together to come up with a question. I wondered what Wolf was doing. Mr. Root. Mr. Wolf. Uh, well, I understand you think I, I have been trying to murder you from my prison cell. Conspirators have a long reach. What? Jane has broken it off with me. I haven't seen her since the trial. The phone records from prison indicate repeated calls to Ohio. My mother teaches first grade in Danforth. She is a very forgiving person. She believes you're innocent. What about your father? Well, I wouldn't know. He abandoned us ten years ago. Last I heard, he works in a war plant in Oklahoma. What about brothers or sisters? Anyone who might feel rancor at the injustice done to you? No one would take a subway ride, much less commit murder in order to avenge me, Mr. Wolf. Hmm. A patriotic traitor would have advocates. A merely greedy one has none. You have built your own prison, sir. Residence? Uh, Fritz, it's Archie. Where is he? Well, he's in bed here, the hard day. Doing what? Uh, never mind. Do you happen to know if he uh, read the star today? Oh, he never does. It's, it's only my copy. Uh, take a look at page 11, lower right. Just a minute. Page 11. Uh. <laughs> Did you phone all the way from Washington just to make a joke? Uh, I don't feel like joking. Uh, who did it make you think of? Well, it entered my mind that there's just a description of Nero Wolf. Ah, right. Right, well, you tell him that it looks to me... Well, no, no, I'll just... Uh, that'll annoy him, never mind. Uh, just show it to him, all right? Yeah, yeah, show it to him, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. At the Pentagon, the room full of colonels fed me lots of unnecessary details. Having finally had the time to analyze the situation, I realized that it turned out to be a game of Ring Around the Rosie. For a minute, it looked sticky, but I wouldn't undertake to report all the combinations they tried. I calculated the odds at 10 to 1 that by morning, no one would remember I'd been there. Good to see you. Good to see you. Very good to be home. Yes, you know, I see he's up working late. Uh, Fritz, I am officially AWOL. A-W-O. O. You must be Archie Godwin. Goodwin. Bring me another highball, would you, Fritz? Did you have a good trip, Archie? Interesting reading. Peter Root's prison records. Yeah. Are you going to Europe? Am I going to Europe? You know damn well I'm not. Did you stop in the office on the way up? 
Yes, and until he asked Fritz for a highball, I thought I was talking to you. Shut up. No, the uh, resemblance uh, between the two of you is remarkable. <laughs> you are paying him out of uh, petty cash, his social security... Shut up. His name is Hackett. He's a retired architect with the manners of a warthog. Oh. However, his appearance is suitable, and he is... Uh, such an unsurpassed nincompoop, he'll risk his life for a hundred dollars a day. No, if he keeps on calling me Archie, I'll show you risk. Well, I don't know. I mean, why don't you just stay put until the bird that killed Jensen is caught? By whom? Mr. Kramer? He's wasting the money of the people of New York to prove Emil Jensen did it. Jensen? Jensen just got back from Europe? Yes, and discovered that his father had filed for divorce. The father and son quarreled. And so despite the fact that he has no motive for killing me, Mr. Kramer put a hundred men on his trail. Intolerable asininity. And I sit here, handicapped. The men I trust are all off to war, except you, and you bounce around. He was piling it on. I knew better than to contribute a note of skepticism when he was in one of his romantic fine. moods, having been fired for that once. I am taking the only way open to me. The killer is bold to the point of rashness now. Mm. And he can be tempted, which is why I. I want you to take Mr. Hackett around town tomorrow, wearing my coat and my hat and using my cane. Uh, doing something like that might get someone killed. Yes. Perhaps Mr. Kramer has a man who resembles you uh, and is alert and resourceful. I mean, there's no point in, in doing this if an attempt on Hackett's life leaves us as empty-handed as we are now. No, 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 yeah, no, I'll do it, I'll do it. Yes, Kramer may uh, be able to find someone as resourceful as me, but I doubt if he'll find someone as, well, you know, handsome. I meant no offense. Oh, none taken, no, no. But clearly you're under a strain, see, yes. Uh, it's uh, very evident, uh, you know, Hackett's life in jeopardy. It's made you uh, nervous. What are you eating? Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Oh, I didn't know we had any. We didn't. Fritz didn't seem to know what they were. So I walked over to Ninth Avenue and got some. When would you do that? Just a little while ago. Oh. Archie, this is the second time this week you have interrupted. I don't care. He is eating ginger snaps. What did you say? Eating ginger snaps, making crumbs in your chair. Get him out of the house. Mr. Hackett, you and I are going to go for a little walk. Oh. A hundred dollars is a large reward for a small effort, and um, I understand that uh, someone may mistake me for Wolf and try to kill me, but uh. if it's more complicated than that, if the intention is for you to shoot me and um, it would say Wolf is dead, I, I'd like to say very emphatically that that would not be fair. <laughs> Confidentially, Archie, I, I don't expect anything to happen. I'm sanguine by nature. Yes, well, I'm uh, sanguine by nature, too, Mr. Hackett. Huh. Come on, let's go for a walk. Ah, uh, now that's what I like. Fresh spring green. Tiny little checks. No, you prefer yellow. Yellow? Yes. Like the sun, the spring sun, which makes things green. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, Mr. Wolf, <clears throat> you wear yellow shirts. Yellow? Yellow. Mm. Well, this is really quite exciting. I didn't realize accepting this position, I gain a whole new wardrobe. Can we stop at the art gallery next?
They tried to get him from the top of the Palisades with a howitzer, but they missed. Other than that, it all went fine. Satisfactory. Uh, call Miss Gear and say I would like to see her this evening at six. I doubt she'll come. Use your powers of persuasion. She has not seen me before. It will be a good opportunity to test Hackett. When you seat her, seat her at the far end of the desk. I would like to observe her through the hole. Then she's on your list. It will give her a chance to kill Mr. Hackett. Very efficient. Admirable. Thank you. Jane arrived at six sharp with a military escort. Well, two on one hook. We were having cocktails and Major Jensen decided to come along in the spur of the moment. I uh, hope you don't mind. Well, if you could just uh, wait in the front room, I have to check on Wolf. All right. Oh, here we are. With Hackett primed only for Jane, we'd be pushing our luck to confront him with a meal, too. I needed new orders from headquarters. She, uh, she brought an outrider, a Major Jensen. I put them in the front room, but the connecting door to the office is slightly open, so Hackett could be seen. Confound it. <clears throat> Go to the front room by way of the office and close the door. Who fired that shot? Did you fire a gun? No, did you? Did you? You idiot, why would I fire a gun? Let me see the one you're holding. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like you to search me. Attaboy. <clears throat> oh my god. I offer no apologies. Yeah, you're fine. Now we're gonna go into Mr. Wolf, uh, discuss Well, I'm not going. I'm not walking into some frame-up. Miss Gear, Major Jensen, Mr. Wolf. Uh. Mr. Wolf is bleeding. Fritz! Which one was it, Mr. Wolf? Which one was what? Who shot you? I don't know. I must have dozed off. It's been a big day. Fritz, if I let him so much reaches for a handkerchief, shoot them. Excuse me, those instructions are dangerous. He it, could. He's fine. It's okay. My head. Is it my head? No, no, it's just a little, it's a little nick on your ear. I'm, I'm not hurt. Yeah, but let's go uh, wash it off. Fritz, they're clean. I've checked. But if one of them uh, tries to exit, plug them. It seems incredible to me that one of them could shoot me from the front room without me seeing anything. Now, see here. If you think Wolf shot you or I shot you, then you have fleas in your brain they need attending to. Now, just hurry back. Do not try to help me and just look wise. And everything, if everything goes as it should, there's an extra hundred in there for you. Two hundred. I was shot at. Ah, Mr. Wolf, this is what nearly killed you. Now, the way it passed through your ear and into this wall, right into the plaster, certainly indicates that it must have come from that front room. You've ruined my wall. I can't abide patched plaster. Mr. Hey, Wolf uh, could have fired that bullet himself. Well, why don't you inspect his face for powder marks? He just washed them off. They don't wash off. Here you go. No powder. Still wrapped in a towel. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a gun. You try it, aiming one inch from your temple. I would suggest... Could I find the, uh, the gun? Yes, yes, I was just uh, on my way to uh, do that very thing. If you were going to examine that room, I... Uh, sit down, brother. Don't forget whose house this is. Remember, Fritz, one false move, shoot him in the knee.
Yours? No. Good. This is an old veteran. It's a, a Granville 38. Uh, pretty nice, huh? Somewhat recently you fired. unspeakable rat. This is a frame. The dirtiest frame up in history. Well, I want my lawyer. In fact, that's where I'm going and you can't stop me. Huh. Well, now I know you framed Peter Root and I let this skunk talk me out of it. I will not tolerate this. You come here and you try to kill me. You nearly do kill me. Then you abuse me about a Peter Root, and I've never heard of this fellow, Peter Root. This fellow? You listen to me, young lady. I'm not, not listening at all. How do you do? I am Nero Wolf. If you don't mind, sir, remove yourself from my chair. All right, all right. Who the hell are you? I have introduced myself, sir. That gentleman is a temporary employee. When my life was threatened, I hired him to impersonate me. You may go to the kitchen, sir. Fritz, take him. Fat coward. I hired this man not out of cowardice, but conceit. I am insufferably conceited. Should I be killed, I doubted that the murderer would ever be caught. Should another be killed in my place, I would still be alive to attend to the matter myself. You said you were going to say something. You haven't said anything yet. What I wish to say is this. It is demonstrable that the shot came from the direction of that door to the front room. Do you both assert that at the instance you heard the shot, you were together? Yes. Yes? Get Inspector Kramer on the phone, Archie. Oh, Jane was right. This is up. a frame It seems up. to me that calling the police in is a dirty trick of yours. May I ask, Miss Gear, how long have you been acquainted with Major Jensen? Two days. I met him here. Is that accurate, Major? Entirely. Uh, Inspector Kramer, please. Not long enough to form an attachment warranting any of the costlier forms of sacrifice? What? Your mutual assertion that you were together when the shot was fired is a blessing for the one who fired the gun. But when the truth comes out, and I assure you it will, for the other, it will mean disaster. Uh, Inspector Kramer on the line. Mr. Kramer. Yeah, what? Yes, I have a bullet and the gun which recently fired it. What? I want the bullet compared to the bullets which killed Jensen and Doyle. Well, I'm going, and nothing you can say is going to stop me. Do you want to stay and talk to Mr. Wolf or leave and talk to the police? Just as I thought, you all stay and talk to Mr. Wolf, right this way. Uh, Major Jensen. Hmm? Oh. Kramer had a man at our door in ten minutes and carried off the evidence. Wolf proceeded without him. Miss Gear, where were you when the shot was fired? We were both over there. And then I remember I went towards the window to freshen up. I heard the shot and turned. Emil was hurrying toward the hallway, calling, Who fired that shot? Do you concur, Major? Yes, we were just where Jane said. She turned to open her purse, and I took a few steps off to give her some privacy. I heard the shot, but with all the doorways and halls, I couldn't locate it. So I called out, Who fired that shot? After Wolf was done with his questions, we spent two tiresome hours waiting for the results on the bullet and the gun, during which time I got a kick out of watching Wolf's poison work on Jensen and Jane. The one who hadn't fired the gun was suspicious of the one who had. The one who had fired the gun acted suspicious of the one who hadn't. From the looks they were giving each other, they were not friends. The only good way to get a suspicion out of your mind is to get something else in. But I couldn't stop being curious. Foy, look at this. Oh, a search warrant, huh? I'm surprised you two are still alive. What's it for? The entire premises. You sent me the gun that killed Jensen and Doyle. That's the gun, and you sent it to me. Now I want the murderer. Is he here? I'm searching the house, Wolf, and I'm not begging you. 
I begged you before. The acceptance of your salary is a fraud upon the people of New York. Start searching. If you do, you'll never catch the murderer. Oh, I won't, huh? Why? Because I already have. The hell you have. Now, your report on the gun settles it. But you're not equipped to handle it. Tear that up. I know you, Wolf. God, I know you. But I'm willing to uh, talk before I execute it. No, sir, I will not submit to duress. Either tear it up or proceed with it. And I will speak to the district attorney about why the murderer got away. Confound it! Don't you ever waste your time like that again. Do you understand me? Or mine? Now, who did it? I don't know. You just said you did! No, I said I caught the one who did. And I have. The murderer is in the house. He's not your client, is he? There is a man and there is a woman in the front room. Now, granting one of them is the murderer, the question is which one? I suggest you inspect the crime scene. Now, why didn't I think of that? Inspector Kramer and Sergeant Stebbins proceeded to investigate. They measured distances, computed angles, extrapolated trajectories, and debated long division. Give me the measurement the other day. Keep the Danny. Keep this jacked up. Yes, sir. Straight. Fritz. Yes, sir. Where is the other cushion? What other? There are three cushions on that couch. Did you remove one? No, sir. There were three here yesterday when I cleaned up. I want you to find it. Archie, help him. I want to know if that cushion is in this room. You think it's a straight trajectory? Let go of it. What's the matter with him? This is a police investigation. Do you mind, Goodwin? Ah. Archie, get everyone out of my office at once. find out if anyone has fired any of your weapons recently. Yes. This one. Very recently. Cha! Assemble everyone in the office. Everyone? Everyone. Archie. I appreciate being asked, but I've had quite enough for one day. I've just been shot at. Okay, okay. okay. I have no desire to go back into that room with a murderer. I just mm. want to get paid and go home. Yes, yes, okay. Now, listen, now, when I am asked to fill an order, I do so. Now, Mr. Wolf has asked me to uh, assemble everybody uh, out there, so come on. No! Come on. I... I... He, he was a little reluctant, I said. Your murderer, Inspector. What? I found this in his pocket. <sighs> yes, we would want to check that for blood. Whose? Oh, it's a farce, Inspector. Low comedy. No, uh-uh. I know this guy. Let me introduce Mr. Thomas Root, father of the imprisoned Captain Peter Root. One more day. One more day. Yes, no doubt, sir. One more day. One more day and I'd have been killed with suspicions centered on Miss Gear or Major Jensen because of your flummery. Unfortunately, for your plan, I became interested, involved, and curious. I am the father of a wronged man. A wrong that needed to be set right. Peter said he never knew his father. His telephone records say otherwise. Vengeance should have been mine. Wait a minute. All you got is this scout knife. 
And how does he fire a gun from in there and beat it back to your desk? With my cushion. Huh? Knowing Miss Gear was coming, Mr. Brute waited for a moment when he was alone. With the cushion to muffle the gun, which he wrapped in a handkerchief to prevent fingerprints or powder residue, he embedded a bullet in the wall, stashed the pillow in the desk, and planted the gun in the vase. When Miss Gear and Major Jensen arrived, Root got a gun from Mr. Goodwin's desk and fired it through the pillow in the drawer. Undoubtedly, we will find that bullet torn into my floor. And when Mr. Goodwin went to the front room, Root returned the gun to Archie's desk, then used the knife to cut his ear. Well, hold it, hold it. You can't prove that. How can you prove that? I don't have to. Oh, the court's just going to take your word for it? Much as I would like to see him punished for threatening my life, it will be easier to convict and execute him for the murders of Jensen and Doyle. That's where I've seen him before. The doorman. Remember, Inspector, I told you, the fat nitwit who was just hired, and he quit his job the day after the murder. You shaved your beard. <laughs> You'll pay for this, Wolf. A father has rights beyond the law! Get him! Sit down! I invite comment. Anything from... Irony to derision to the fact that I paid a hundred dollars a day to let live in my house, eat my food, and sit in my chair, a man who was resolved to kill me. I wish you would take him somewhere else, Mr. Kramer. I've seen enough of him. Yeah, I can't say as I blame you. Get him out of here. Come on, Tommy Root. Let's go. You got him? I got him. I got you. Got That was absolutely brilliant. It was merely a job. I uh, owe you more than an apology, Mr. Wolf. You were not my client, sir. No, no, for my father. Well, in that case... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 in that case, right? When your father came to him and told him somebody was trying to kill him, he said he could do nothing for him. And that's exactly what he did. Nothing. So legally, you don't owe him a thing. Ah. Emil. Well, thank you very much, Inspector. Well, you're welcome. Major stay at home. <laughs> you know, Wolf, you weren't interested, and you certainly weren't involved, and you definitely weren't. You weren't concerned! Curious. Same thing! What, what the devil are you doing? I am trying to look as much like an officer as possible, sir. Hmm. Yes, I have an appointment in Washington day after tomorrow with General Carpenter. Oh, indeed. Yes, I, I want to take an ocean voyage. I have thought of a crushing remark to make to a German, and I'd like to use it. 
That's nonsense. Every attempt you've made to go overseas has been denied. Yes, I think Carpenter will see my point. Look, I admit that you are a great detective, a champion beer drinker, and a genius. But this is a hell of a way to spend a war. And if Carpenter calls and you tell him that you can't do without me, well, then I am going to put gristle in your crab meat and sugar in your beer. <laughs> I got this in the mail this morning. Well? Well, I can tell you free for nothing where this came from. You mean who sent it? No, I, I'd have to charge you for that. No, uh, this came from an ad for a movie called Meeting at Dawn, and the ad is in all the magazines. Well, sir? What am I going to do? I'm sure I don't know. But this is not just the usual junk from an anonymous crate. Well, someone is going to try to kill me. I don't know who, why, when, or how, but I want some protection. And, and, and I want to buy it from you. I could feel a yawn coming on. I'd heard Wolf tell at least 50 scared people of all ages and conditions. If someone is determined to kill you, the fact is that they will succeed. We knew Ben Jensen from the Peter Root case. I'd always thought Jensen would have bought the military. Examine the mucilage uh, before, for signs of tampering. When opening a door, stand to one side and fling it wide before crossing the sill. Bear in mind your correspondent is severely restricted by saying, I will watch you die. This person has to be there when it happens. Good God. There's no panic is called for, sir. Uh, how many people, Archie, have threatened my life in the past ten years? Uh, about 22. Fully. At least a hundred. I'm not dead yet, Mr. Jensen. I'm not dead yet. Jensen pocketed the clipping and left. No better off than when he came, except for the valuable tips about licking envelopes. Cornwall and Mayor, if you decide to hire a bodyguard, have the best man. There you are. The secrets Captain Root had tried to sell him if he'd been able to figure out how to use them. He was a publisher, a politician, and in my opinion, a poop. That's why I want to hire your brains. You might be able to interest the police, and if not, uh, we can provide a list of reliable detective agencies who can provide bodyguards. What about him? Uh, Major Goodwin is unavailable. He's an officer of the United States Army. He's not in uniform. Officers in military intelligence on special assignment have freedoms. A special assignment? Yes, he assists me in various projects entrusted to me by the Army, such as the affair with Peter Root, which resulted in his court-martial and conviction. It leaves me little time for my private business. What am I going to do? I suggest you use your own brains and give up the idea of renting mine. Go about your business, but with reasonable vigilance. When licking envelopes, for instance, 